In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can solve exponential equations by getting the bases the same. So there are several ways we can solve exponential equations, um, but this video is only going to look at the method whereby we're going to get the bases the same. So let's talk about what an exponential function is. And really, or sorry, an exponential equation. Really, an exponential equation would be an equation that has a variable in the exponent. So this would be an example of one here. 3 to the power of x equals 9. That makes this an exponential equation because the variable is an exponent. So this method is going, we, one way we can solve these equations is to get these bases the same. These are the bases here. And really, every number has an exponent on it. So this one I can actually say is 9 to the power of 1, because 9 to the power of 1 is 9. But the problem with this equation is, is these are, there's our bases, they're not the same. But we could write them so that they had the same base, because 9, this number 9, I can write as a power of 3. We know that 9 is the same thing as 3 squared. So I can write this equation, instead of 3 to the power x, instead of 3 to the power x equals 9, I could write this as 3 to the power x is equal to 3 to the power of 2. And now this becomes very easy to solve. If 3 to the power x is equal to 3 to the power 2, then it would make sense that these two things up here must be the same. So in other words, x must equal 2. So there I have solved that equation. What is the power on 3 that equals 9? Well, 2, because 3 to the power 2 equals 9. Here's another exponential equation. It's an exponential equation because the variable is an exponent. And in order to solve this equation, I'm going to attempt to get the bases the same. So the base on the left side is 2. The base on the right is 8. But I could write that as 2 to the power of 3, because 2 to the power of 3 is 8. Now that I've got the bases the same, the exponents must be the same. So x equals 3. And we can check our answer back into the original equation. 2 to the power of 3 is 8, and 8 does equal 8. Here's another example. 25 to the power of x equals 125. Well, I can't, I can't express 125 as a power of 25, but I can make both of these bases powers of 5, because I know that 5 squared is 25, and I know that 5 cubed is 125. So on my left side, I can say 25 is the same thing as 5 squared, and that's raised to the power of x, and on this side, 125 is 5 cubed. So really on the left side, I have 5 to the power of 2x equals 5 to the power of 3. So the hardest part in, in using this method is simply making sure that you get the bases the same correctly. Once you've got the bases the same, now I can say, OK, the exponents must be equal. So the exponent on this side must equal the exponent on this side for them to be equal. So 2x equals, whoops, not 5, 3. So 2x equals 3, and now to isolate x, I can divide both sides by 2, because I just have a linear equation now. And x equals 3 over 2, or 1 and a half. We'll look quickly again here, two more examples. So on the left, left one here, I've got 8 to the power of 2 minus x equals 4 to the power of x plus 1. So in order to get these bases the same, it looks like I can write them both as powers of 2. So 2 to the power 3, that would be 8, because 2 cubed is 8. So I'd have 2 to the power 3, and then my exponent is 2 minus x. And on this side, 4 is the same thing as 2 squared. And then there's also another exponent here of x plus 1. So 2 to the power 3, which was 8, times 2 minus x, equals 4, which is 2 squared to the power of x plus 1. And so now that the bases are the same, 3 times 2 minus x will equal 
2 times x plus 1. And now, again, I just have a linear equation here to solve. So using distributive property, uh, 6 minus 3x equals, same thing here, 2x plus 2. And now I'm going to get all my x's on the same side, so let's minus 2x from both sides. That's minus 5x on the left side. This would cancel out, we'd have 2. And then we can minus 6 from both sides. And finally, we can divide by negative 5 to isolate x. And a negative divided by a negative would be a positive. The solution to this equation was x equals 4 fifths. And we got that by getting the bases the same. Now this one here looks a little bit tricky. So I've got 3 on the left side, but I've got this 1 ninth on the right side. Well, 1 ninth is the same thing as 3. Well, we know that 9 is the same thing as 3 squared. So 3 squared is the same thing as 9, but this is 1 over 9. So remember that a negative exponent takes the reciprocal. So 3 to the power of minus 2, 3 to the power of 2 means 9. And this negative exponent, you should remember, means to take the reciprocal. So this should be, that would make that 1 over 9, which is what I have. So 3 to the power of x minus 2 equals 1 over 9 I can write as 3 to the power of negative 2. Again, 3 squared is 9. The negative would make it 1 over 9. And then I still have this exponent of x plus 4 up here. So I've got the bases the same. So that's x minus 2 is the exponent on the left side and negative 2 times x plus 4 is the exponent on the right side, and so that's x minus 2 equals negative 2x minus 8. When we multiply this out, add 2x to both sides to isolate x. And add 2 to both sides. And divide by 3. And we get x is negative 2 as our solution. So this is one way that we can solve for exponential equations. And it's actually a, a fairly simple way. But it won't work in all cases. So as soon as I make a question like this, we can't express 3 and 5 as powers of, of a common base. So this method has some limitations. This is this is method's not going to work for these ones. But if, when you look at a question and you know you can write the bases as powers of of one common base, then this is an excellent method to solve exponential equations. So just to summarize, in order to solve exponential equations by getting the bases the same, the first thing we want to do is we want to re write the equation with the same bases. So in this particular example, we'll get both of them with powers of 2. And now that I have the bases the same, I can set the exponent on the left side equal to the exponent on the right side. So that's 3x equals, that's my exponent on the left side, equals 3 times 1 minus x. That's the exponent on the right side. And now I would solve the equation for x. So I get x equals 1 half. And then it's always a good idea to check your answer. So you would take this value of a half and stick it in here and here. And make sure that your expression on the left side equals your expression on the right side.